I'm Tactical Pascal, welcome to the channel, I hope this finds you all safe and well. In this DCS World GF17 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the BRM-1 laser guided rockets. The BRM-1s are 90mm laser guided rockets and you use them in conjunction with your targeting pods or of course you can be buddy lased. however that does require you being on the same code. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up the code on the ground with the rockets and then how you operate and fire them at targets from there. They're very good against soft targets or medium armour like BMPs, things like that, but against bigger things like tanks or more modern tanks like the T90, they struggle a bit and it takes a lot of them to kill it. So let's get cracking. Here we are in the cockpit of the GF-17. Now the BRM ones need us to use a targeting pod so they can have a laser to follow down towards the target. So make sure obviously you have a targeting pod there. So I have the WMD, WMD-7 pod selected and then two sets of BRMs on the wings. Now to use the pod I actually need to select the CLDP button. So when you press combat this button isn't going to appear so you need to remember and select it. Now to actually get the pod warmed up, I'm just going to switch to air to ground mode now. And if your pod doesn't come on, let's say for example it's showing you your HSD, what you need to do is press the middle bottom button, and then the top right which is pod, then select WM, WMD7, and then click the on button. Now that's going to run through the bit test. It'll take a minute until that lines up. Now you can see here 1688. That is the laser code that I'm currently using for the... Um, WMD7. Now I can change that code. However, I can't change the code in the rockets. That needs to be done by the ground crew. So if I look over here at our systems, we can see here the code for the BRMs is 1688. So they will track a laser code of 1688. Now that's the default code that everyone uses. And obviously that's going to be a bit of a problem if you're multiplayer and you're flying. So what we want to do is get the ground crew to change this 1688. Now the way we do that is by backspace then we press F8, so ground crew. Then we want to update laser code, which is F7. Then we want choose all pylons. And then we're going to change our units. So we'll go 1681. So F6, 1. Setting complete. Roger, stand by. And they will change the laser code from 1688 that should update to 1681. Our pod is now aligned so we can uncage and it's in snowplow mode so it's paint pointing laser straight forward. Ready. So laser code is ready. Our lasers are now going to track 1681 so to change our laser code in our pod we press the code button and then we press 1, 6, 8, 1. So now when we fire our laser it will fire on code 1681 and our rockets will track code 1681. Now it's a good idea if you're flying in a flight of four, for example, lead's going to take 1681, wingman 1682, then 1683, 1684, etc. However, you can change you can't change the first digit, but you can change the uh, second, third, and fourth. So the six, eight, and one, they can all be changed depending on what you're flying. So if there's lots of you, you want different codes, make sure you deconflict it, otherwise you're going to have targeting problems. So that's how we set up the pod with the codes, so we can change it from 1688. If you're flying single player, of course, you can leave it alone. If you're in multiplayer, you might need to change it. Well, you will need to change it, otherwise you're going to be firing and tracking each other's uh, weapons. So what we'll do is it'll get airborne, and then I will fly towards um, a target, and I'll destroy it. Now, it's quite simple to do. Uh, these weapons are really easy, so I'll get a crack with that just now. Altitude. So we're airborne and we're heading towards our target area now. So I'm going to go to air to ground mode. Now we can see here the BRMs are off. I need to turn them on by putting the master arm on. And then it will say standby, 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 and then it will say armed. So our BRMs are on. So we're flying out towards our um, target point, so I've put a waypoint in near some targets. Now I'll move my pod there by pressing slave, so that's already slaved to the target and I'll zoom that in in a second. In fact, let me... No, I won't active pause it, we've got time. So I'll maintain this altitude 
So our BRMs are set. We have whip, uh, the mode is direct, the weapon is BRM, the fuse it says safe, so I need to change that. I need to make it armed, so select set electronic fuse. Now the quantity is one. If I wanted to fire from both uh, pods, I would press two and it automatically goes to salvo. So we'll leave it on two. The BR alt is the breakaway altitude, so that's the warning height that it'll get. I'm going to change that to 400 feet. So we've got a breakaway of 400, salvo, quantity two, weapons BRM. Now let's find some targets. So we've slaved our pod to our steer point. It's in wide at the moment. Now, me doing this, moving my weapon isn't sorting anything out at all. What I want to do is select my target and pod as the sensor point of interest. I'm going to go down and zoom in on the target area. Now there's some targets over here somewhere. I just need to find them. So what I'm going to do is ground stabilize the pod there. And then I'm going to go to narrow field of view. And use my radar zoom in, zoom out button. I'll see if I can locate them. There we go. There's some targets. So we'll zoom in and we'll select this tank here. And we've got a point track mode, sir. Weapon is locked on. I'll turn off autopilot now. Then I'm going to roll in three and a half miles away. That's fine. So I'm going to fire my BRMs at him now. Off they go. Heading towards the target. I'm going to break up and away. Zoom out a little bit so we can see the explosion. They came in. So that's a T90. So two BRMs wasn't enough to destroy a T90. So we're going to roll around and we'll attack him again. So we'll leave the uh, pod locked onto him. Now what you'll find is sometimes it, the pod or the weapon won't fire. Now you need to be in point track mode um, in certain circumstances. So if it's in area, just tap your weapon lock forward one more time, or your pod lock rather, and then it's going to put it into point track rather than area. So we're four miles away. We're getting range information on the HUD there, so we'll roll back in towards it. We see the flash and cross, that means the weapon's not ready to be released because our maneuver is too violent. So rolling in towards it now. Zoom in. And then we'll hit point track again. Fire another salvo. And we're gonna come up and away. So he's still up by the looks of that. So you can see the BRMs are not great against tanks. So I've fired four and that T90 is still up. Now what I'll do is I'll select a new target, which is a BMP. So I'm going to change it from salvo to just one. And I'll roll in against the BMP. So for tanks like the T90, more modern uh, tanks, you're going to have to fire quite a few. But for BMPs and things, you don't. You just need to fire one, maybe two, depending on the type of BMP. So we're in range. Trying to fire. It's not working, so point track. Weapon release. See the impact. So one BRM. One BMP dead. We'll move the pod to the next BMP. A major disadvantage of this weapon is the fact that you can only fire them one at a time. Well, you can fire obviously salvo, but only one target at a time. Now that's because you need to wait on the weapon reaching the target because it's tracking the laser that is being fired from your pod. And if you start to move your pod and shift your laser, then it's going to shift the aim point for that rocket. So it's not a fire and forget weapon, it's a fire and guide it down towards the target. And obviously you need to maintain your pod uh, sensor awareness on the target. So I'll roll back in, it will do one more BMP and then we're going to finish off that tank. So 
So rolling in. It's a good idea to have a, a higher angle of dive than this, but it is what it is. So we'll go point track. Then we'll fire two. You can do them individual and keep repeating. Then they'll all track that same laser point and they'll just keep impacting that target area. So we'll zoom our pod out and we'll get ready for the time. Oh, they're firing back. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, they're enemy. They might want to. They might want to shoot back. So we'll climb up and away. I'll get a bit of uh, distance and then I'll come back in and I'll blow up the tank. You see the flashing in range, that's in yet the weapons in range, but obviously I'm flying away. And if I fired now, there's no way it's going to turn in around and head towards it. It's not going to track. It would just fire off into the wild blue yonder. So we need to be pointing roughly towards the target. So rolling in. We are 4.7 miles away. Turning in, that'll give me time to move my pod towards the tank, so... Zoom it in. Where's Mr. Tank gone? There he is over there. Point track mode. And instead of going salvo, I'm just going to fire them in singles. So I fired six off at him. I'm just going to pull up. And with six hitting him, he's still just sitting there fat and I'm happy. So let's salvo him. So this is an example here of the rockets. They're good against BMPs and lightly armoured vehicles, but against heavy armour, those tanks, they're not going to do much. So it's a good idea to save them for lightly armoured vehicles. If you're going to go against the tank, then take like a C-101 TV guided or something. So we'll roll in, four miles away, I will engage him so we'll salvo everything at him this time. So it's not firing, point track, six sets of missiles away, or rockets rather, you see them all coming in. There he goes. So as you can see, engaging a tank is pretty wasteful for your rockets. What you want to do, save it for those lightly armoured, uh, lightly armoured vehicles. That's it. That is the uh, BRMs. That's how easy they are to use. There's going to be more content coming on the channel uh, for the Jeff. More weapons. So move on to air to air soon enough. I uh, just wanted to make sure I got these air-to-ground things out there because the Jeff is a very good air-to-ground platform against specific targets. Now, that's the biggest thing is a lot of it is planning. What are you going up against? What are you going to engage? Because, yes, it's multi-role in the fact it can carry air-to-air -air and air-to-grounds. However, it's mission limited. You're not going to fly in as a multi-role on one mission. You're going to fly in either do air-to-air -air or air-to-ground. You're either going to do seed or you're going to do CAS. You're not going to multi-roll like an F-18 or perhaps an F-16. But the pod, the aircraft, and the ease of use of its systems, uh, I recommend this for anyone. It's absolutely brilliant. That's it. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Please come along and join us. Let me know in the comments below how you use your BRMs, what you engage it with, and if there's a quick way... Stop shooting at me if there's a quicker way that you like to employ those weapons. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, Tactical Pascal, out. Altitude, altitude, altitude.